If we could call the Finance Committee meeting to order, if we could read the roll. Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Here. Mr. Jones? Here. Ms. Cole is absent, so Mr. Lind? Here. Motion to approve the agenda. Second. Don't forget the minutes. And the minutes. And the minutes. Second. A motion and a second for the agenda and the minutes of November 2nd. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. One of you two would like to take those travel requests, please. Mr. Chairman, I'll do the travel request. Yes, sir. <coughs> Jason Hernandez, Medical Officer, IEMSA Conference, Des Moines, on uh, the 12th of November, amount not to exceed $220, and Noel Anderson, Community Planning and Development Director, 2016 Cedar Valley Coalition, Washington, D.C., February 22nd to 24th, 2016, not to exceed 1785 Second. We have a motion of second on those two items. Any questions, comments? No, I just have one quick question. Is why, why are we approving this so early? Because you can get a better hotel rate. Is that the deal that I saw in the attachments? No, Anderson Community Planning Development Director. Get a better uh, airfare. Oh, okay. I think the hotel rates are pretty much set. We get better airfares by doing it early. Okay, and and I think Keith helped out. No, I don't know. But uh, <laughs> you said you tell me no, Keith. Just, just trying to plan right. ahead. We've in the past we've gotten better airfares doing it a lot earlier than. And once the date is finally set, we know when it is. There's no reason to wait. Okay, thank you. You flying out of Waterloo, no? Yes, I am. God Excellent. bless you, my son. Anything else? Uh, seeing none, uh, any other questions, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. And Those items are approved. David? Pre-authorizations. We have Central Garage, $5,546.57 5 for directional bore conduit to fuel distribution kiosk. Central Garage, not to exceed $7,500 for fiber optic cable to fuel distribution site. Leisure services, $4,200 for youth hockey equipment to be used in WYHA recreational hockey program and paid for with funds from the Fred G. Merold Fund. Leisure services, $16,645 for electrical service being run for lighting at Straw Ball Diamonds, Public Works, $4,335.59 for base modem and control stations, GPS, sanitation, $13,516.16 for GPS AVL vehicle modem, sewer, $9,212 plus $300 shipping for replacement, AMA electric actuator for FEQ Basin, traffic not to exceed $33,500 for yellow and white water-based traffic paint and reflectorized beads. Second. We have a motion to second on those items. Any questions? I did have a question yes, sir. on sanitation, the GPS, AVL, vehicle modem. Is that something new we're doing? Mark Rice, Public Works Director. This is uh, new. It's vehicle tracking. Okay. Um, so it can, uh, it's joined up with the 800 megahertz radio system that we put in. So it's not cellular based, so there are no monthly fees. Uh, but this, I think, will allow us to improve our tracking as well as improve our routing for our trucks. Um, be able to identify fuel savings as far as for idling, et cetera. So. Okay, awesome. Mark, Mark, is, is this for 16 vehicles? Is that what I'm seeing? Or 16 these? vehicles. Okay. Right. And then also, could we back up to at Central Garage, the uh, uh, fuel distribution, is that for the new facility? That's for the new facility, for the new kiosk. Okay. So we'll have to move all of our monitoring software and hardware from this existing Central Garage or the old Central Garage to the new kiosk. Didn't we talk at one time about having an east and a west side fueling station? Did we... Just we did. We weren't. That. Um, that that needs to be reworked. Uh, gaming didn't look uh, positively on us for that. So, gotcha. All right. Thank you. Any other questions? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Those items are approved. We also have one line item uh, amendment, and that is for Mid America Energy rebate in the amount of five thousand three hundred ninety-three dollars and eleven cents for the improvements at Young Arena. <coughs> Um, finally, we have the bills payment for this week. They are 
$1,703,218.26. That's 1, 703, comma 218.26. Second. We have a motion and a second on that. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Bills will be paid. Motion to adjourn. Second. We have a motion and a second to adjourn. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 We're adjourned. Thank you, gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, and, and welcome to all of those uh, of you that are in uh, chambers tonight. We have a good turnout tonight. It's always nice to see. And those that might be watching us on our public access television channel also, uh, welcome to this regularly scheduled meeting of the Waterloo City Council this November the 9th. Madam Clerk, would you start us by reading the roll, please? Yes, Ms. Cole. Mr. Jones? Here. Mr. Schmidt? Here. Mr. Lynn? Here. Mr. Morrissey? Here. Mr. Wilber? Here. Mr. Hart? Here. Thank you. Uh, if you would all join me, please, in standing for just a moment of silent reflection and prayer would be much appreciated. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, our pledge tonight is going to be led by Mr. David Jones, our Ward 1 City Council person. Mr. Jones, please. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. May you all be seated. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Hart. I move that we uh, approve the agenda as proposed and also the minutes of November 2nd's regular session. Second. Council, do you have any questions or comments regarding uh, tonight's agenda or last week's minutes? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Uh, we have three proclamations tonight, and we're going to start with the uh, World Pancreatic Cancer Day. 
uh, Miss Melissa Givert. Melissa, are you with us? And anybody else that you might have, just come up, come through the door over here and come up to the front, please. <coughs> Good evening. You're Melissa. Nice to meet you. Hi. Amy, nice to meet you guys. Come on, just kind of so that we can face the camera. We are, uh, with the help of these two ladies present tonight, going to recognize uh, World Pancreatic Day. Is that correct? Yep. Very good. Okay. Pancreatic Cancer Day. I'm sorry. This is a City of Waterloo, Iowa proclamation. Whereas in 2015, an estimated 48,000 960 people will be diagnosed with pancreatic cancer in the United States. 40,560 will die from the disease. And whereas pancreatic cancer is one of the deadliest cancers, is currently the fourth leading cause of cancer death in the United States, and is projected to become the second by 2020. And whereas pancreatic cancer is the only major cancer with a five-year relative survival rate in the single digit at just 7%. And whereas when symptoms of pancreatic cancer present themselves, it is generally late stage with 73% of patients dying within the first year of diagnosis, while 93% of pancreatic cancer patients die within the first five years. And whereas approximately 410 deaths will occur in Iowa in 2015, and whereas pancreatic cancer is the seventh most common cause of cancer-related deaths in men and women across the world. And whereas there will be an estimated 367,000 new pancreatic cancer cases diagnosed globally in 2015, and whereas the good health and well-being of Waterloo's residents are enhanced as a direct result of increased awareness about pancreatic cancer, and the research into early detection causes and effective treatments. Now, therefore, I, Buck Clark, Mayor of the City of Waterloo, Iowa, do hereby proclaim November 13th as World Pancreatic Cancer Day. Melissa, I'm going to give this to you, and I'm also going to give you a microphone. I'm hoping you're going to say something else about... Uh, about this event, and you have to put it right up in front of your mouth and, and talk. Okay, so. Uh, my name is Melissa Gibbert, and I'm the advocacy chair for the Cedar Falls uh, Pancreatic Cancer Action Network affiliation. Amy Jarden here with me is the affiliate chair. On behalf of the Cedar Falls uh, Pancreatic Cancer Action Network affiliation, we'd like to thank you for the opportunity to address the Waterloo Cedar or City Council this evening. Uh, the Pancreatic Cancer Action Network is the national organization creating hope through research, patient support, community outreach, and advocacy for a cure. I wage hope here today for my family and friends. I've watched my dad fight for his life. I've seen friends lose their spouses, parents, aunts, uncles, cousins, siblings, and children. I've seen the pain in their eyes and the, felt the weight on their shoulders after being told, get your affairs in order, you don't have much time. It isn't only my life and the lives of my family members who have been touched by this disease. This is a problem that is affecting our entire community. The incidence and death rate for pancreatic cancer are increasing, and pancreatic cancer is anticipated to move from the fourth to the second leading cause of cancer deaths by 2020. We would like to thank Mayor Clark and the Waterloo City Council for your important contribution to the national fight against pancreatic cancer. By declaring November 13th as World Pancreatic Cancer Day in Waterloo, we're helping do critical work of making the public aware of the disease and its truly lethal nature. We hope that working together with you, we will be able to continue to raise awareness, support patients, families, and find a cure. We would like to invite everybody to wear purple this Friday in honor of World Pancreatic Cancer Day. You may ask yourself, why should I wear purple when I don't know anybody with pancreatic cancer? And the answer is, because at one point I didn't either. We encourage you to visit our website, www.pancan.org, to learn more about pancreatic cancer, our organization and its mission, the research we fund, and the comprehensive no-cost services we provide to patients and their loved ones. Thank you again for supporting our cause and helping us wage hope by raising awareness about pancreatic cancer. Melissa, you're more than welcome. God bless you guys. Thank you for Thank what you. you do. Okay, it's Thank appreciated. You. Thank you very much. Thanks. <laughs> Okay, uh, 
we are doing Adoption Month, and Krista Hayfell. Krista, come on up. Hayfell, come on up. Very good. Good to meet you. Yeah, yeah. This is a Waterloo, Iowa proclamation uh, on Adoption Month. I bet that that's this month. It is. Ah, wow, good for me. Uh, whereas uh, the state of Iowa recognizes the importance of giving children permanent, safe, and loving families through adoption. And whereas more than 101,000 children in the United States foster care system are waiting to be adopted. And whereas teens who will be transitioning to adulthood have an especially urgent need for adoptive families or permanent connections to caring adults. And whereas November is a special time of thanks and public awareness for adoptive families in the Iowa Department of Human Services, Iowa Kids Net, the Iowa Foster and Adoptive Parents Association, and the numerous individuals, public organizations, and private agencies who work diligently to make sure every child has a safe and stable home. And whereas every successful adoption is a success story in which all Iowans can share and our future depends on our commitment to helping all children develop to their full potential. Now therefore, I, Buck Clark, Mayor of the City of Waterloo, Iowa, do hereby proclaim November 2015 as Adoption Month and urge all citizens to learn more about ways we can positively support youth in our community. I'm going to give this to you and I'm also going to give you the microphone and uh, I would imagine you have some hold it right in front of your mouth. Close. Perfect. Okay. Well, I'd like to thank the council for recognizing Adoption Month as na or National Adoption Month as November. And I would uh, like to encourage anybody, if you want more information about becoming a foster or adoptive parent, to go to iowakidsnet.org. Um, there are lots of family, lots of children that need a loving family. And the Waterloo area specifically needs homes that um, are open foster homes as well as homes that will take in teenagers. So we're always Very looking good. for more homes. Very good. Okay, good. Thank you for coming again. Thank, Thank you, guys. Oops, I missed. Thank you, guys, for what you do. Take care. Thank you. And certainly, uh, last but not least, is uh, Radiologic Technolo Technology Week, uh, Chris Messner, and it says possibly others as well. So if all of you guys would like to come up, that would be fabulous. Just come on up, ladies and gentlemen. Just kind of get a half moon around me here at right, right and go all around and fill in and move and yeah there you go perfect perfect are you good to yeah. see you yeah come on and get right get right here uh, this is an annual thing we always yeah. have fun with this uh, Chris comes to see us and and once a year we do an annual radiologic technology week it always challenges me to say those two words together fast but I somehow make it most of the time city of Waterloo Iowa proclamation whereas Maintaining top physical condition is an important goal shared by citizens, medical professionals, and qualified practitioners specializing in the use of radiation and the treatment of disease. And whereas a safe radiological environment is made possible through the dedication and care of radiologic technologists, and whereas the contributions of these radiologic technologists, nuclear medicine technologists, diagnostic medical sonography technologists and radiation therapy technologists in our state are helping our citizens live longer, healthier lives. And whereas these contributions are the result of education, research, and greater understanding. Now, therefore, be it, resol be it resolved that I, Buck Clark, Mayor of the City of Waterloo, Iowa, do hereby proclaim the week of November 8th through the 14th as radiologic technology week in Waterloo and encourage all citizens to recognize this event and to participate in its observance. Chris, I'm going to give this to you and again the microphone here I will give you, there we go, Thank you. you bet. National uh, Radiologic Technology right. Week is celebrated annually to recognize the vital work of rad techs across the nation. The celebration takes place each year during the week that includes November 8th to commemorate the discovery of X-ray by Wilhelm Conrad Rankin on November 8, 1895. 
The week-long celebration calls to the important role medical imaging professionals play in patient care and healthcare safety. Celebrated professions include CT, MRI, ultrasound, interventional radiology, diagnostic radiology, mammography, radiation therapy, and nuclear medicine. As president of Area 4 of the Northeast Iowa Society of Radiologic Technologists, I would like to thank the City of Waterloo, Mayor Buck Clark, for their recognition and support. Thank you, sir. Let me, uh, I, I just, let's, let's do a little bit of, of introduction yeah. here. I, I, are you guys all students or are you uh, rad techs? I like that. That's yeah. a lot yeah, shorter. Rad. Okay, so that's, that's cool. So, are you guys students or what? Yeah. They are okay. all students except Paul. Paul is our newly appointed director of the school at oh, uh, Covenant Medical okay. Center. So. Why don't we just real quick, just, just say your name and where you're from, okay? I'm Katie Majeski and I'm from Green, Iowa. Okay. I'm Bethany Christensen and I'm from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Wow. I'm Kelsey Higginson and I'm from Jamesville, Iowa. I'm Lindsay Becker and I'm from Manchester, Iowa. I'm Claire Tuttle and I'm from Cherokee, Iowa. Okay. I'm Paul Kitchell. I'm from Crowville, Louisiana. Wow, okay. <laughs> I'm Sarah Chenet, and I'm from Knoxville, Iowa. I'm Samantha Glazier, and I'm from Sterling, Illinois. Okay, guys, congratulations on what you've chosen to do in your profession, and uh, hopefully if I'm ever laying on one of your tables someday, you'll take good care of me. Thank you, guys, very much. Appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. I need to do one more thing. Uh, I did not see Dave Bozen come in, but our November team member of the month was Dave Bozen, who now works for us in the Waterloo uh, Police Department property and evidence room. Dave was a longtime Waterloo fireman, retired a few years ago, and uh, is now in charge of our property evidence room. And uh, Dave is just one of those guys that, uh, uh, just as a hard worker, he comes to work every day and he gets things done. And with this transition that we're going through with the Waterloo Police Department, moving its evidence room from the third floor in the jail, which they're initially, the old jail area, and they're just bursting from scenes with evidence stacked on top of each other. We're moving across the street to the old uh, garage area. And Dave is ramrodding that and has just done an incredibly good job organizing that and getting that done, that move uh, done. And we're not done with it yet, but anyway, I was uh, honored to recognize Dave last week for his great work as Team Member of the Month for Waterloo for November. So Dave, if you're watching, thank you. You do a great job. It's much appreciated. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, we can get on with business. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Hart. I move that we receive, uh, place on file, and approve the consent agenda, items 1A through B3. Also with the approval of the consent agenda, I move that we make our bills payment, which will be read by our finance vice chair. Our bills this week are $1,703,218.26. That's 1,703,218.26. Second. Very good. Council, do you have any questions or comments on the consent agenda? Hearing none, it's a roll call vote. Madam Clerk, please. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Lind? Yes. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Welper? Yes. Mr. Hart? Yes. Very good. The motion carries. And, and let me just, there was a, there was a request last week, uh, a gentleman, uh, there's no lady here tonight, uh, that we speak into the microphones again. And I know if, if everybody could just really kind of make an attempt, it might seem awkward at times, but if you're speaking, if you try to get right up close to the microphones and speak into it, I'm sure that our audience members would greatly appreciate that. So thank you very much. Uh, let's do the public hearing. Item number two. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Schmidt. Item number two is a motion to receive and file proof of publication of notice of public hearing, and that's a request to vacate, sell, and convey a 1,920 square foot portion of an existing alley located north of 1317 West 11th Street to Curtis and Kerry Schultz for $200 and to establish a permanent driveway to an existing detached garage with a development agreement. Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries, and the hearing is now open. Madam Clerk, were there any written objections on file to item number two? There were none. 
Is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak either for or against this item, item number two on tonight's council? A second time. Mr. Mayor, I make a motion then to close this hearing and uh, receive the recommendation of approval of the Planning, Programming, and Zoning Commission. Second. Council, do you have any questions or comments? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Mr. Mayor, make a motion to receive, file, and consider, and pass for the first time an ordinance approving a request by Kurt and Carrie Schultz to vacate a platted 1,920-square-foot alley. Second. Madam Clerk, please, it's a roll call vote. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Lind? Yes. Mr. Morris? Yes. Mr. Welper? Yes. Mr. Hart? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. We get the motion carries. Mr. Mayor, make a motion to suspend the rules. Second. Madam Clerk, please. Mr. Lind? No. <coughs> Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Welper? Yes. Mr. Hart? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? No. Very good. We will uh, do the second hearing next week. Resolutions, please. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Morrissey. I'd like to make a motion to adopt a resolution approving Iowa Department of Natural Resources Wastewater Disposal System Construction Permit Application Fee Form and Construction Permit Application Schedule A, General Information for the Fiscal Year 2016 Northeast Industrial Park Sanitary Sewer and Water Main Extension Contract 900 and authorizing Mayor to sign said application. Second. Council, do you have any questions or comments regarding item number three? Madam Clerk, please. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Welper? Yes. Mr. Hart? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Lynn? Yes. Very good. The motion carries. Item number four? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Morrissey? I'd like to make a motion to receive, file, consider, and pass for the first time an ordinance amending the 2001 City Code by repealing Title IV, Public Health and Safety, Chapter 4, Letter Control, Subsection 4-4-1, Definitions. Enforcement authority in its entirety and insert in lieu thereof a new enforcement authority to Title IV, Public Health and Safety, Chapter 4, Letter Control, Subsection 4 4 1, Definitions and Amending, Chapter 5, Municipal Officials, Subsection City Attorney, 1 5D 2D, Additional Duties in its entirety and inserting in lieu thereof a new set subsection 1-5d-2d dash dash additional duties second council do you have any questions or comments regarding item number four mr mayor um, yes sir could we have a little overview on what this is and who it's submitted by sure uh oh it's not submitted did you submit this or did i submit this who submitted it susan i think i think me uh councilman schmidt uh, and just it just didn't get put on there the code enforcement uh department as i sent a message to all of you a couple of weeks ago is moving back downtown and for i think probably since the code enforcement uh, division was first adopted in the ordinances it states that it's under the building official it has moved a couple of different times to the police department and then down to the sewer department and has been under the auspices of those other entities without ever being officially moved in the ordinance section to put it under the right uh, buttonhole. Uh, with, with this uh, move, it will be under the city attorney's office, under Mr. Zellifer, who is anxiously awaiting their arrival. Uh, and it's basically just uh, clearing up and making official the authority of which the code enforcement officers will be working under moving him from the building department to the city attorney's office. Very good. Are there further questions? Nope. Madam Clerk, it's a roll call vote. Mr. Welper? Yes. Mr. Hurt? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? No. Mr. Lund? No. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. It passes, right? Yeah, the motion passes. Okay, very good. Thank you very much. Well, Mr. Mayor? Yes. I'd like to make a motion to suspend the rules. Second. Okay. Uh, Madam Clerk, please. Mr. Hart? No. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? No. Mr. Lind? No. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Welker? Yes. Okay, very good. We will take this up uh, for the second reading next month. Item number five, or next week, I'm sorry. Item number five, please. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. Item number five is a exception 
to burning yard waste application, and that is uh, application come to us from Chris Hess on behalf of Control to burn a large trash pile, 30 feet in diameter, located at 2950 Newell Street in December, weathering and weather and wind permitting, and that comes to us with a staff recommendation denying the application. Okay. Uh, second. There's a motion and a second. Chief, why don't you fill us in on the details of this before we have any further discussion? Pat Treeler, Chief Fire Services. Uh, the City of Waterloo has a perpetual burn ban, and uh, the exceptions that, uh, that we allow to that burn ban are, are prairie grass and uh, fireworks. And those are the only two that, uh, uh, that would go along with the Iowa Administrative Codes to... Uh, to allow uh, Mr. Hesse's here in the audience right now that uh, who wants to burn I did go out and inspect the pile and uh, for one it's it's a very large pile um, and then it's uh, it's fairly close to uh, some businesses out there on Newell Street uh, certainly within a quarter mile that uh, that could uh, um, affect some of the services of the, the crown group their makeup air on their rooftop units could uh, scent smoke depending on which direction the smoke is coming from the pile. So it is a recommendation, uh, myself and the fire department, that we uh, deny this request to burn. Very good, thanks, Pat. Mr. Hesse? Yes. Yes, it, would you like to make your argument, please? Sure. Just uh, step to the microphone, if you would, please. Just repeat your name and give us your address, please. Chris Hesse, I work control. It's at 2425 GT Drive in Waterloo. I have done, uh, been in at control 14 years I did call all the council members before I applied for the burn exception uh, the biggest thing is the cost involved in cleaning the mess up like I told you all on the phone I understand the uh, 13 years since anything's been approved our company bought the property as is along the fence behind all the tall grass we found a bunch of down trees and we cleaned the mess all up and put an organized area to hopefully burn it so Mm -hmm. Hopefully everybody sees our side of it and uh, can look past the exceptions. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hesse. I, I'll just remind council before we take a vote and before we make comments that uh, at least two times under my administration in the last six years, we've had uh, larger requests come to us, such as this, one from John Deere, one from a major developer that wanted to clear some brush, and, and council has denied those two, both of those two applications. So. Uh, yes, sir, Mr. Morrison. Uh, Iowa Department of Natural Resources, um, do they ever weigh in on this? And if they if they have in the past, uh, or if, on this situation, if they were to weigh in on it, what would be your uh, best guess as to where they would stand on this? Well, <coughs> excuse me, I do think that it's in, uh, in violation of uh, Iowa Administrative Code because it's within a quarter mile um, of surrounding buildings. I did air in 2011, I did allow a burn out on Shawless Road, and uh, I thought it would fall under an exception for agricultural use, uh, but the mayor did receive an email from the DNR uh, stating that uh, we were not following uh, chapter or section 563, chapter 23 of the Iowa Administrative Code. So I aired there, and uh, uh, I've turned down other requests that haven't come to council. Uh, I respect Mr. Hesse's uh, side of things, but uh, I do think that it would be inappropriate to approve the exception for this burning. Are, are, are you saying then that we would be in violation according to our Department of Natural Resources rules? Yes. Okay, thank you. Further comment, Mr. Schmidt? So, Pat, uh, burning is not a statewide ban, correct? Well, administrative code starts off the very first... Uh, section of it is says uh, no person shall allow cause or permit open burning of combustible materials except as provided and then it lists exceptions and certainly what we do with uh, residential uh, recreational fires is listed right in administrative uh, the code so we're in line with it there okay. so it is it is a statewide uh, uh, code so so banning is burned everywhere in Iowa no, I'm not. No, I'm not saying that. Okay. I mean, so if if this property was uh, out in the middle of nowhere and there wasn't structures uh, close to it, then it could certainly be approved uh, at the county level. Isn't banning allowed in Evansdale? Burning. <coughs> burning. I'm sorry. Banning. Burning. Banning. 
Band uh, I'm, I'm not aware of what goes on there. Okay. I was out there at an event this weekend, and somebody was certainly burning something. Um, it sure smelled like a lot more. And my point is, how, how far from the edge of the city limits is this facility? I had engineering check on it uh, through the clerk's office. I think they're they're probably within a quarter mile of being outside of city limits, but they are definitely in city limits. And so, what's going to be their options to deal with this? Do you know? Or well, I, I that's Hesse? probably maybe directed towards them. I think just would be haul it away. We probably have to move it to the outside limits and burn it there. We probably have to. Rather than you're not going to take it to landfill. You're no, gonna, that's much too costly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Further, <coughs> Madam Clerk, to roll call vote, please. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, just, oh I'm sorry. Sorry, sorry David. Just a, a, a quick one. So, uh, I think the chief set me straight there. I thought it was, you know, so close to the city limits that it probably wouldn't have been an issue. But he says since it's close to structures, it potentially could cause a problem with their um, rooftop units. Correct. Correct. We we had a fire over Christmas a few years ago, out of the 4,000 block of Hess Road. A number of bales were on fire in a barn, and that actually shut down the Isle of uh, Isle of Capri uh, with their rooftop units sensing smoke. It shut down their ventilation system. So that would be a slight concern for Rider Logistics and uh, the Crown Group that are uh, fairly close to the burn pile within a quarter mile. But you could somewhat manage that based on wind and, as you mentioned in the, the request, wind and weather, that type of thing, correct? <clears throat> that it, yeah, he filled out the re request, not me. Well, no, no, but, but I'm just saying that that could be managed somewhat <laughs> based on the wind. <clears throat> sure. Yeah. And the pile is a clean pile. I know in the past we've had requests where there was all kinds of stuff mixed in with the brush. Is this? I, I know you said you went out and looked at. It. Is this? I wouldn't say it's a clean pile. Uh, there's there's lumber in it and there's a chain link fence in it, but uh, oh, okay. I didn't see that. And George with the State Park uh, last summer uh, uh, put a similar request in. I went out and, and denied it. And they chose not to uh, come to council to uh, try to get uh, council approval. All right. Thank you. Okay. But, Chief, it's still against DNR policy then, right? Correct. There, there is a home uh, uh, probably a third, uh, less than a third of a mile from uh, the burn pile. A, a private residence. Okay, so basically they'd have to push it out further into the county to make this feasible? <laughs> push out of the authority of, uh, of, Waterloo, right? of Waterloo Fire, I guess. I, don't, I just don't think it, it, it won't work for us, in my opinion. Well, it's not just us, it's the DNR as well, right? Correct, yeah. I mean, I erred in 2011, and I'm I, not going to make that mistake again. And, and I'd forgotten that letter. I, now, after you mentioned that, I remember that letter. Yeah. Just uh, one question on the whole uh, DNR. Chris, come to the, the, come to the uh, microphone, please, so everybody can hear you. As far as the DNR portion of that, if, I, if the person living in the house signs off, does that override the DNR's position, or is that just that's the rule and that's the rule? No, there is, there is a process that you can go through to get... Uh, uh, clearance from people within a quarter of a mile. Yeah, because that that the, would help. That would help your cause on the uh, part of the trees uh, are from the guy that lives right there. So it'd be very sensible he would approve it. So just had to ask him back to the whole wind comment Steve made. You know, I want to make sure that the wind would be the correct direction for the burn. Wait till winter when we have snow covering. We don't have a a fire that gets out of control. A spark starts a cornfield on fire or something of that effect. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. There's other issues there, too, in my opinion. There's Newell Street that's fairly close. Um, and we've just been very, very consistent over the years to uh, not allow burning with uh, the exception of fireworks and uh, prairie grass. Madam Clerk, roll call vote, please. And I'll just note that a yes vote approves the burn, a no vote denies the burn. Mm -hmm. Mr. Jones? No. Mr. Schmidt? No. Mr. Lund? Yes. Mr. Morrissey? No. Mr. Wilper? No. Mr. Hart? No. Very good. Mr. Hesse, it, 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 your request fails, and, and uh, I, I'm sorry that that's the case, but we have been very, very consistent with this, and uh, I understand that there's a cost to you, but 
uh, boy, we'd be setting a, a pretty desire, a dire uh, precedent if council had passed it. So thank you for coming and thank you for doing what you're doing out there. And I'm sorry that we couldn't help you on this issue. Thanks. Okay, thanks, Chris. Okay, uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's a short meeting tonight and that's the end of our regularly scheduled meeting. I am going to ask uh, all of you tonight, uh, we, we have a very special presentation tonight. I was going to cancel uh, oral presentations tonight altogether and, and do this, but uh, I, I've, I've decided not to. But I would ask you please that uh, we, this, this is a really cool thing we're gonna do tonight with this presentation. I would ask you if you, if you just have to make presentations tonight to, to come ahead, that would be fine. Uh, consider maybe holding off to, till next week if you can, but if you can't, uh, come on up. Uh, and uh, the mic is open for you to, to come up. And, and please do though, keep your, keep your comments to three minutes if you would. I'd like to have my three minutes and then your answer after my three minutes. Well, one question is, it was brought up in a newspaper, some of these businesses... Hey, hey, I, 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 just give us your name and address, please, sir. I'm sorry. Dwayne Eilers, 1205 Bishop Street. Yep. Uh, the same question as it was brought up in the paper is that uh, some of these people were uh, grandfathered in. At the end of my time, I'd like to have uh, somebody tell me what grandfathered in is. Also, being that it was stated that... Uh, Everybody was pushed back till the 1st of May. Is my client pushed back till the 1st of May and he can use my lot till the 1st of May, same as everybody else? Question. The next thing is, why is only, why is only the car dealers being issued this notice when there's a lot of small businesses, a lot of truck, trucking companies, a lot of other businesses that are strictly all gravel? And I pointed out a whole lot of them to Mr. Hart that were all on gravel, the same as the rest of us. I'd like somebody to answer that after my time is up. Um, is the tickets that were given to my client on this lot going to be rescinded, being that everybody else is pushed back to May? Nobody else was given a notice. Nobody else was given a ticket. Is the tickets rescinded? on the people that rented my lot? Question, I'd like an answer to that. The other question is, finally after four years of getting the electric turned on to my house, is the mayor gonna turn this over to the police for an investigation that Mr. Youngbud busted into my home with a crowbar, did a false inspection. Then the same inspector is the one that cut my electric off after it was approved and finalized and approved by the court which I showed to the mayor is something going to be done on that that's a question I'd like to have an answer to it why is um, the date pushed back to May now when it was a big hurry to force my people off of my lot, all of a sudden it's pushed back to the 1st of May. So everybody has a chance? Well, how come my people didn't have a chance? My people that rented my lot were given tickets. They were given a notice and tickets, both, nobody else. Why is there only 60 notices sent out when I showed 100 to Mr. Hart? Uh, Mr. Ellers, I, 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 I can't remember all of your questions, so I'm not going to answer them. Uh, no, I'm not going to do anything about an investigation on your break-in. If you had a crime committed at your residence, come to the police department and file a police report. Uh, as far as your property, you were originally contacted by code enforcement sometime in the late spring or early summer, and I can't remember when. You came to my office, I told you that I would extend, and the code enforcement officer at that time gave you 30 days to clean up the property. You were not issued tickets, you were issued notices to clean up the property. I extended that 30 days to 90 days, so you had 90 days to clean up your property. Uh, and you eventually did. I mean, your, your property down there looks great now, so thank you for doing that. Um, as far as why we're only doing car lots, 
we have to start somewhere and we have a limited amount of resources. And I think the biggest uh, part of the violations right now in Carlock's the uh, grandfathering. I don't know what the situation is with grandfathering. That's why in that letter, there was a name and a, a phone number that was given that says, please call with questions. Our intent here is to sort out the car lots that will be, could be, should be grandfathered in versus those that are in violation. So we will try to do that. Uh, I can't remember any of the other questions. Um, if I didn't answer them, please come to my office and I'll do that at some other time. Thank you. Uh, is there anyone else? John Churton, 1715 Robin Road. I'll try to make this short. Um, I, th and this is basically, a, uh, I don't know if you can answer this question tonight. If Mr. Zelloffer takes over the code enforcement, does that mean that it's going to cost us more money or less money? It, there'd be no change. There'd be no change in so cost. you get an attorney for the same price as a department head. There you go. And no hours or extra or whatever. There, there's, there's no expense to it, John. I tried to pay Dave more for doing this, and he wouldn't take it. Right, Dave? No, I'm sorry. I'm not being light. I shouldn't be. Yes, sir. David Dreyer, 3145 West 4th Street. Um, I, I respect your request to not do this tonight. Thank but you. Last week, uh, I asked about what the need was for the new chain link fence down mm -hmm. at the, the uh, grass mm -hmm. and, and branch disposal site. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Dreyer, can I answer you? And, and then we'll, yes. okay. The, the cost was $15,350. It was approved by the Finance Committee on September the 8th. The reason is to secure the area to prevent illegal dumping when the, when the area is closed. There you go. Okay. Um, I guess I've been down there many times and I've seen illegal dumping while there's a, there's a, a okay. person at the gate, etc. Okay. So you're really not stopping anything for fifteen thousand three hundred thirty dollars. Okay, thank you. And there's still no grinder it's, or sitting It's, it's three hundred and fifty dollars, but who's counting? Uh, yes, sir. Jim Chapman, two two four Birch. Uh, one thing that's been catching my eye in the paper has been this Conagra. I don't know if you've seen it or not, but they're moving out of Omaha. They're moving their their uh, headquarters to Chicago. They're going to start laying off people. Is that the same company that we just gave a bunch of money to out you here? Bet. Did anybody in our organization know that ConAgra has been going through this problem? Absolutely. We, we it's really not a problem. It's a, it's a downsizing and moving, Jim. If you'll do it in reverse, you noticed something in the paper last week about Syngenta. Syngenta is closing their Waterloo office and moving to another office in the area. So ConAgra did the same thing, except they chose yeah. Waterloo. Well, so this said, is a very positive thing for Waterloo. They said they're, hard, they're having a hard time keeping up with their competition as far as cost-wise. Okay. Okay. So they got to cut costs. So I just wonder, I hope that yeah. don't happen here. Me too. I think we're in pretty good shape. Is there anyone else that needs to talk tonight and need to, need to address Mayor Council? Thank you. Uh, we're going to we're going to start. I'm going to start with uh, before we get into my presentation. Uh, there was an election last week, and uh, I, again, the turnout was much less than I would have liked it to been. I wish we could get more interest in local elections, but I really, really want to uh, express my uh, thanks and congratulations to not just the folks that came out on top of the elections, but to everybody that got involved. It takes a lot of courage uh, to do that, and uh, you know, depending on what level, folks uh, kind of lay themselves out. And this year was a marathon year for forums and debates and appearances and so forth. And I know all of the candidates worked incredibly hard and should all uh, be congratulated equally, both those that prevailed and those that didn't. And it's worth naming uh, the, the mayoral candidate was Frank, Frank Magsiman and Leah Morrison and uh, Wayne Nathan, and then we had Mr. Hart and Mr. Hurley. And uh, with that many people, it was almost inevitable that we're going to have a runoff. So a congratulations goes to Mr. Hart and Mr. Hurley uh, that will be in a runoff election December 1st. 
And to Mr. Magsman, Ms. Morrison, and Mr. Nathan, God bless you guys for stepping up and putting your name on the line and being willing to participate in the process. Uh, that says something for each of you, and it is much appreciated. And for the council candidates uh, for Ward 4, we had four candidates in, in the Ward 4. We had uh, Agnes Cress, uh, Rosetta Robinson, uh, who else? Uh, I've Jerome lost my place. Jerome Amos and Chris Schwartz. <coughs> so, uh, and that race, uh, Jerome Amos and Chris Schwartz uh, prevailed and will be in that same runoff on December 1st. But uh, Agnes Cress and Rosetta Robinson also need to accept our congratulations and be proud of what they've done. And then in Ward 2 for Carolyn Cole's seat, we had Robbie Hathaway and Bruce Jacobs. So the, the two of those uh, uh, in that race, Bruce Jacobs won that race and will be our next Ward 2 Councilman. Uh, Councilman Schmidt, congratulations to him. Uh, he ran unopposed, so uh, he was able to win that race. So to all of you guys, uh, it would be, uh, I would be remiss if I didn't say uh, thank you and congratulations for doing that. Mr. Nathan, please quickly. Wayne okay. Nathan, 548 Clover. I want to thank you for uh, recognizing all of this. Yes, we did put in uh, a lot of time. We've had about 19 or 20 forums. It took a lot out of us, and we were glad that it was over, I'm sure, by the time it was all done. Yeah. And uh, congratulations. I want to say uh, congratulations to Mr. Hart and uh, Mr. Hurley for their effort and so forth. One of the things that happened during this, neither one of us really attacked the other. It was pretty clean. And I want to thank everybody for being that way. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Nathan. Appreciate it. Okay, uh, we're going to end the, tonight's regular scheduled meeting. We have an executive meeting after this, but uh, on, on something that I just, I just think is incredibly cool, incredibly positive, just incredibly fun, if, if you will. It's something that I've never been involved in before, but uh, uh, we're going to kind of, it's, it's not us making a presentation, but Joel, if you and Cindy would probably come up, or Joel, if you don't want to, you don't have to. I know you don't like to come up, but, uh, and, and Bruce, why don't you come up? Jerry, maybe you can help Bruce come up and let's come through the door. And, and uh, what I'm going to be, I, I'm going to give a little background uh, as we, as Bruce comes up. And many of you that are regular, either viewers or visitors, recognize Bruce Kayser as uh, uh, being a regular attendee at our council meetings as of late. Uh, Bruce and I go a long, long ways back, and I'm not going to dwell on any of the, uh, of the, uh, of the details, but uh, in 1981, Bruce, is that right? 82, Bruce was uh, clerking at a local uh, liquor grocery store down on Lafayette Street in Waterloo, third shift, trying to make a buck, was the victim of an armed robbery, and got shot in the process. Um, uh, I, uh, my partner and I happened to be the first unit, police unit on the scene, and when I saw Bruce, I just thought he was dead. I didn't think there was any way Bruce was going to live, but he did. And he's not only lived, uh, he's, he's lived well. Uh, he's contributed and continues to contribute and continues to, to be a, uh, continues to be a viable uh, uh, citizen of Waterloo. Uh, as you can see, Bruce is in a wheelchair. That's fairly obvious. Uh, this is Joel and Cindy Shepard. Back, I don't know, a few weeks, several weeks ago, actually, we've been working on this for a while. Joe came to me and says, uh, Mayor, we've got a, a, mobile, a mobile chair that used to be Cindy's mom's that we aren't going to use anymore. Uh, Cindy's mom passed away, so they don't need the chair. Uh, they could have put it on Craigslist or put it on a garage sale or sold it or whatever. They said, uh, we'd like to give the chair to Bruce if he would like to have it. So I asked Bruce. Bruce had to think about it a little bit. And, and, and then, uh, then we decided that, uh, that Bruce decided, yeah, he'd kind of like to have the chair. So uh, Joel and Cindy, and actually uh, Cindy's sister, uh, uh, are, are, uh, are donating the chair. And we still had an issue. Uh, we had to come up with a battery, I believe. And then we got a battery, and then we, could, we didn't have a battery charger for the thing, and uh, you know, not surprisingly, probably the chargers for these things are pricey. And uh, we couldn't come up, find a place to get a charger. And I thought, you know what, maybe Jim Walsh, because of his association at VGM selling hospital equipment, could come up with something for us. So we were able to not only get the chair, but uh, hand me that, would you please, guys? Uh, a brand new, Invacare battery charger. That's a brand new unit that is complements of BGM Corp. 
So, Bruce, God bless you, my man. Thank you. Okay, so Bruce gets a new chair, and I, I don't know how the, the transition is going to go. Jerry is, is Bruce's good, good friend, but we're going to do that. And, and Cindy wanted to say a couple of words. I so, think said a lot of it. Well, okay. No, I mean, okay, yeah. Let's speak right into the, right, speak right into the mouth. Yeah. Bruce, on behalf of my family, we'd like to donate this to you. And um, I give you kudos for coming to all these meetings and having such a positive attitude. Um, my mom would love this. <laughs> and I think you're on the board for the ADA now. And my mom was in a wheelchair for 40 years with MS. I totally get it. And I'm so glad you can use this. And so just be careful because it goes really fast. <laughs> <laughs> we found that out in the parking lot. <laughs> so on behalf of my family and my mom who's not with us, I hope she gives you a good ride. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Cindy, thank you. Joe, anything? Nope. 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 Okay. I'm not speaker. Okay. <laughs> Guys, this is, this is just really cool. Really, really cool. So we are, uh, I, I don't know what to do next, uh, Jerry and Bruce. So what I think we'll do is maybe Bruce can come down. We're going to adjourn to executive session. And after we do that, we'll... <laughs> thank you. I got you back here, Bruce. Okay. What's that? Crash. Bruce wants to know if he's got a helmet he's got to wear with him. Full face mask. Okay, why don't I, I tell you what? We'll go out front here and we'll. we'll yeah, let's. We'll stuff on. Yeah, why don't, why don't you. Let him drive it back out and you can yep. teach it. Yeah, there we go. Why don't you go on out, Bruce? And. Uh, yeah, would you? There we go. Okay. Well, don't go away. We got to get. We got to adjourn. There you go, Jerry. Oh, I appreciate it. You are good now. Yeah. You know, I, I, ladies and gentlemen, I, I think I, for, I forgot to mention in all of that uh, that presentation. Uh, if I could have your attention just a second, Wayne. Wayne. If I could have your attention, I, I, I totally forgot to mention in that, that that both Joel and Cindy are employees of the city of Waterloo. Cindy works up in the planning department or in the in the building department actually and Joel is one of our maintenance engineers and has worked both of them have worked for the city for a long time. So uh, what what great folks. So anyway, thanks again. There you go. Uh, somebody you want to Mr. Mayor. Mr. Hart. I move to adjourn to executive session. Second. Oh, move to accept oral comments and to adjourn to executive session. Second. Okay, uh, Madam Clerk, are we, or Madam Clerk, uh, Mr. Zellifer, are we adjourning in proper authority? We are going to discuss litigation this evening under Iowa Code Section 21.5, so yes, we are. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Lind? Yes. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Welford? Yes. Mr. Hart? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Very good, we are adjourned. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen.